Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? It's Casey here. I'm back with yet another video. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So I want to talk about this um, story. Or really, I hate to call it a story. Um, but I want to, um, to speak on this topic here with the pastor, Greg Locke. So, um... I see here, and I saw this story on uh, Isaiah's page. I can't, I don't even know how to say Isaiah's last name, but um, he's known for deliverance. But um, he said that he's a friend of Greg Locke, the pastor Greg Locke, which I believe um, resides in Tennessee, and that his home was shot up 30 to 40 times. And as I understood from the video, he said that um, Isaiah said that um, he was like within a minute of his home, of getting home after it was shot up. So look how good God is. Look at this. So it's mad wild, y'all. This is the wicked generation, I'm telling you. But these people went and shot up his home. Said his daughter's headboard was hit. I mean, the garage was hit. Uh, vehicle was hit. I mean, 30 or 40 shots? Really? Really? Now, according to what he's saying, though, no one was hurt. No one was harmed. When I say he, I'm talking about Isaiah. Sorry. Um, because I don't know anything about this pastor. I don't have any history with this pastor. I've never... I never heard of this pastor. I don't, I don't know if he's famous. He probably is, but I just, I don't know of him. Um, like I say, Isaiah said he's his friend. So I'm just hearing from his friend's perspective. Um, and Isaiah, according to him, he's saying people are making lots of videos about him saying, you know, really mean things like he has bad doctrine. He's a heretic or I'm not here speaking on anything like that because again I don't know anything about him I've never heard of him I've never you know um listened to a sermon but what I want to speak about is what um the message that the Lord gave me about a month ago and I brought it here to you guys and it has to do with um Pastor Greg Locke and I need you guys to be very careful okay because um, the message that he was telling me was be careful because persecution is a common. And um, what the Lord was explaining to me was that Christians are going to be really tested. You know, we say we, you know, all it is, we, you know, we, we, but we about to see. We about to see. And, um... He was explaining to me that people was going to be betraying people. And he wasn't even talking about unbelievers because he's talked to me before about unbelievers. But no, this was totally about people turn on each other. Christians turn on other Christians. Um, but it's, gonna, it's, it's straight up in the house division. And I kid you not, you can look up that video, but. I made that video maybe about two or three weeks ago, but I really, I got the message because I was reading through the books of book of Acts at the time in Matthew. He had me reading Matthew, certain scriptures there. It was like two or three chapters and then Acts. And he was explaining to me that it's about to come back to that um, persecution for Christians through the government, through religious leaders. Just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, there was religious leaders and they persecuted Jesus Christ. You know, Jews, you true Hebrew Israelites, right? Um, and that the disciples, you know, they all was also martyred. And um, yeah, so he was saying, get ready for persecution. Get ready to see um, persecution from being lied on. Um, the church being lied on, the church being um, basically y'all tearing each other up, basically division between the church. 
And it's so funny after you said that how I started saying things busting out online, like all of these explosions of people um, coming after people that supposedly Christians and things. But he wasn't just talking about that. He was talking about what ha happened with Pastor Greg Locke. That it's about to get evil out here in these streets. And we're going to see who the real ones are. Are the real ones still going to stand for Jesus Christ? Are the real ones going to back down because they can't deal with that spiritual warfare? They ain't about that life. Right? We about to see because when God is providing, when God is making sure you got a home, when God is making sure you got food, shelter, clothing, when God makes sure your, I, your iPhone bill is paid. When when you can eat what you want to eat when you want to eat it when you can wear what you want to wear right when you can do what you want to do when God is looking out for you whether you be a believer or not but we talking about believers right now but remember God let it rain on the just as well as the unjust the sun shines in the unjust backyard just like you shine in the just yard I'm just putting that out there. But what's crazy about it is that he said that people are throwing stones at this man. And 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 it just made me think of, oh, God, this is what God was telling me about. Why are other Christian people throwing stones at this man? Now, again, I don't look. I don't know if he a part of anything crazy. I, uh, I don't know. So I don't know. But it's crazy how you got somebody that's willing to shoot up your home. Knowing you have a family, knowing, and, and that's spraying up a house, that's straight up drive by, boys in the hood, while sipping your juice in the hood, minutes to society, y'all know what I'm talking about, type of time. This is somebody is trying to get a message across and they, they and, and they want that, that message, they want it. it. It's bigger than a message. But ain't God good? That that man wasn't home and in place at the time and nobody was hurt or, or harmed at the time. And ain't God good that within a minute, you can't tell me God did not intervene. You cannot tell me God didn't intervene. This is why I tell you when little things be happening and the spirit be telling you go this way instead of that way. You don't even know why that thing happened in front of you. Why that lady taking so long writing that check in line. Goodness, you writing that check, woman. You know all you had to do was swipe your card, but you still, you want to write a check. You know, extra 10 minutes and like, y'all know what it is, right? But it could have, could have been that check that lady was writing that saved his life because it took him an extra 10 minutes to make it home. Could it have been, you know, some a, a car accident or something that happened that slowed him up so that he wouldn't get home? Until after the perpetrators left. You can't tell me God ain't good. This is a testimony all day, every day. If that man wasn't saved, he need to be saved today. Okay? Because that right there, that's true. That's proof. It's too many, and we talking about the hood right now. It's too many hood boys right now. Even innocent. Ain't even part of gangs. Ain't even part of none of that. Just going about their regular day and getting shot. Just like that. Did nothing. You can't tell me God did not intervene in this plan right here. You cannot tell me that. But I want to say this. Because a lot of y'all is going to fall away. And I'm going to tell y'all why y'all listening to these false prophets out here talking about ain't nothing bad going to happen to you. When the word says totally the opposite. <laughs> you living in a, in a day and a time and an hour where trials and tribulation is it's about to be the great tribulation very soon. It's about to be the great tribulation. Satan walking around here in skin and Obama. Okay. It's about to be the tri great tribulation. And if Jesus was hung on the cross and he did nothing wrong to anybody. And he sinned never, ever, ever. 
and they treated him like that. When the scripture says they're going to hate you because of me, meaning Jesus, not me, meaning Jesus. They're going to hate you for preaching my gospel. They're going to hate you because you're for me. You believe on me. You have faith in me that the world don't like you, don't want you, don't want nothing be part of you. They're going to hate you because they hated me first. And what slave is better than their master? You're no better than the master. Why do you think even the disciples, even Paul, and I know most of y'all don't even believe in the writings of Paul, which is very sad y'all going to go to hell because you don't want to believe in the writings of Paul. But we ain't going to talk about that here in this video. But you mean to tell me that Paul went through all he went through, died. Um, Stephen, uh, all the disciples, all the people that was murdered. And they was apostles. They was disciples. They was preachers. They was teachers. They was evangelists. They were prophets. They, what, they, 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 they were of the faith. They were of the faith. Unfortunately, bad things happen to good people. Unfortunately, it happens. We ask the question, Lord, why was this child neglected by their parents? Why was this child molested by their parents? Why? Because we're thinking this is just a baby. What did this baby do, God, to deserve this? You see, you see what I'm saying? What did this innocent four-year-old child do? do to deserve being murdered what did what what but but people will tell you ignorantly that these people are sinful they must have sinned they did something wrong they were evil or maybe their parents were evil or something like that and it's because they have a little bitty brain that's right they have a little bitty itty bitty brain and according to what our scientists tell us we don't even use but three to five percent of that and i think they said if you're a genius you use about ten percent so number one you have an itty bitty little bitty brain and it ain't quite working you think it's working but it ain't quite working and then the next thing is God is God and he have reasons for why he do and allow what to happen to happen how he do what he does and his ways as the scripture says his thoughts are not our thoughts his ways are not our ways so we don't know why the little children get hurt and harmed we don't know what well one thing well let's see one thing is y'all don't judge each other as the scriptures say, you're supposed to be judging each other. You're supposed to judge yourself first. And then you're supposed to judge your brother and sister. So that we can all be on one accord. So we all can be moving together in one accord and have some power in these churches. But no, if you do that, people are so sensitive. I'm about to rant. People are so sensitive in this generation now. Oh, ow, it hurt my feelings. I'm sensitive. All you did was tell them to pick up the phone. All you did was tell them go get the broom and sweep. All you did was tell them, hello, how are you? And they so sensitive. They little bitty feelings. So imagine if you tell them you need to stop masturbating and watching porn. Imagine if you tell them you know you need to stop telling all them lies. Imagine if you tell them you know you need to stop embezzling. You know you're stealing all that money from your job from one account to the next. Imagine if you tell them you know you really need to stop smoking. Imagine if you tell them you know you shouldn't cheat on your husband. I don't, you know I don't think God really liked that. Oh boy, if you do that, it's all out hell. You are not a Christian. You are not loving. You are not 
kind. Oh, and don't raise your voice. Ooh, if you if you raise your voice above this temple, then you hurt their feelings. And that was designed because our generation, we, our generation, totally different. They, they see they put that gap between the generations, and they let y'all go to hell and the hand water the young, the younger generation. I'm going to say about if you 30 or younger, 30 or younger, because I remember when we did what our parents said to do. And I remember when the law stu stood in and said, no, you don't have to do what your parents said to do. You can call 1-800. My parent beat me because I didn't um do something right. I didn't mow the lawn. And yeah, so I remember that. Yeah, and so you couldn't discipline your child, which is what the Bible says to do. So what they decided to do, since you don't do it, the police will do it. They'll be your correctional officer. They'll be the correction officer for you because you didn't do it. Because either you was too lazy and neglected to do it, okay, because you was a sorry parent. Or, and I'm sorry, I'm just putting it the way it is. Or, because the laws... Had them flipped on the parents. Kind of like how the laws then flipped on the parents now. And saying your kid can be dragged. And your kid has the right to tell you at five years old. That they feel like a girl or a boy. Therefore they no longer need their penis. And can have it cut off. And you must comply as the parent. You see. Well they had something like that back then. And I remember it. Because let me tell y'all a little story. This is cute little dark skinned little boy. This cute little dark skinned little boy. And um I never forget little Willie. And so I'll never forget it. His mama had whooped his behind. I forgot he ain't do the dishes or something. Something. And that law had just come out. <laughs> and he called the police. My mama beating me or whatever. The police came. And when the police got there, the police said, what's the problem? And they found out there was really no problem. And when they found out that mama was whooping his behind because he wasn't doing what mama said to do, they said, all right, well, we'll stand here and watch you whoop him. So we'll make sure you don't do too much force. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll go about our whack. So, you know, that's what it was. But. That was just his little special situation. But a lot of children have been kidnapped and been put into the DCF system and been sex trafficked, it, organ trafficked, it, murdered and everything else in that system because they have been systematically and illegally taken out of their homes, kidnapped, legally kidnapped. OK, and this is how they did it. They treat the kids and say, all oh, you got to do is say that, yo. Mm -hmm. So they made you soft. They made you soft because your parents couldn't discipline you the right way. Now your feelings, you all hurt. You all sensitive. You can't deal with life. Y'all wonder why y'all have so much anxiety and panic attacks. We, we, we y'all can't even live life. I, you know, and I'm just going to say, I remember when I rode my bike, I busted my behind, knees scabbed up, bleeding, bloody, broken, this and that. Oh, no. Y'all generation, you got to have wear a hat. You got to wear the little, what was it? The little bike hat. I can't, the helmet. What? To ride a bike? You got to wear, the, like they, here in Florida, it was a law. They could literally charge you if you didn't have the um pad, the knee pads the elbow pads and the helmet for a bike for a child even look at the playgrounds i just want to show y'all how soft how soft y'all is like bernie mac told you you're soft you're soft you're soft remember you used to say that about jordan the, the little boy you're so soft because they made y'all soft they don't want you to have masculine energy. If you notice, the women have the masculine energy now and the men are effeminate, which is a sin, by the way. They're very effeminate. 
They're not masculine. That's why they're passive aggressive. They'll never really confront you. They're scary. They're passive. God is not passive. A real man is not passive. They're alpha. They are alpha men. They are very, very masculine. Very direct. That's what men are supposed to be. But they made you so soft. Everything hurts your little feelings. Why am I saying this? Why? Because we can't tell you nothing without you being offended. Nothing without you being hurt. Nothing. You just, it just, it don't quite, it don't register. So, if we could, then we could do what the Bible says does, which is to judge one another. Which is simply holding each other accountable. So if I'm trying to stop, quit, I didn't got saved. I'm trying to stop smoking cigarettes. I need a partner. I could go to AA. I think it's called AA. No, that's alcoholics. NA, narcot. It's one of them A's where you stop smoking. And so um, I could go that route and get an accountability partner. You know, someone to help me out, someone who's been through it before. And I can call them, hey, I want a cigarette, man. I want to puff real bad. And, you know, I don't know what to do. And then they'll talk you through it, walk you through it. You hang out together from time to time or what have you. You could do that. Or you could do it with your brother or sister in Christ. And we're not talking about just cigarettes. We're talking about sin of any sort or type or kind. Right? But no, you don't want to be held accountable because you soft. You soft. You're very, very sensitive. And, and the reason I'm saying all this, guys, is because when it comes down to this persecution that we already see starting to happen, like I already see it on social media happening, and it is wild. You can tell witchcraft is, is all wrapped up in it, by just like how it is being transpired. But persecution, this man, this pastor, Greg Locke, that's ultimate. Somebody wants you dead and they let you know so much that not only are they going to target you, they're targeting your family. You see? It's going to be a lot of persecution and this is what I need you guys to know. This is why we have to be spiritually set and spiritually ready because, oh God... Because you just never know where you're going to be. Which is why, you know, we have to pray. We have to put on the whole armor of God. We have to plead the blood of Jesus. We have to put on our spiritual protection. We have to, you know, we have to be plugged in so that we can be led to where we're supposed to be led. Right place, right time, things like that. But guys, we're about to have a lot of things happen. Especially in America where, you know... If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it can be really, really bad. It's some stuff I don't even like to say out my mouth. It's so scary. But it's going to happen because it's prophetic. It's prophecy. It's, it's Bible. It's written. You can't stop the written word. So you want to make sure that you're spiritually set. So just in case, just in case you're with somebody who's going to be under that judgment and you're in that car with them. Are your wit? That's why I was saying you need to separate yourself too, man. Because judgment is coming around, man. In the Bible, and I forgot where it said. I believe it's Proverbs, though, where it talks about where you need to be careful about who you wit and things because you never know when judgment hit. Um, it don't say it exactly like that, but y'all put it in the comment section. You know what I'm talking about, but when it does. That, it, you know, you can avoid some things. <sighs> Guys, I, want, I, want, I don't want y'all to fall away because, listen, a lot of people going to leave the faith because of what's about to happen. Which is this. A lot of y'all is not about to be raptured away. Let's say the rapture is a real, true doctrine. Let's say it's real. Let's say it's true. Most of y'all not going to be raptured. I don't care how many spiritual gifts you have. 
you're not going to be raptured. Most people, you're just, you're not ready. Your gown, it's not, you're not ready. Your heart is still evil. It's wicked. It's just true. So you should be just be planning to stay here anyways. So when a lot of people don't get raptured, let's say the rapture happened and you don't get raptured. When a lot of people don't get raptured, people's going to turn their back on God. When a lot of calamity come, people's going to say, God would never do this to me. Jesus would never do this to me. Oh, no, this would never happen to me. going to fall away. You're going to fall away. Because evil is going to happen. A lot of people will die. A lot of people will be judged. A lot of people, you know, for being wicked, for being evil. It's their time to go. But then you do have some Christian folks that may be in good standing with God. And for whatever reason, he might say, you know what? Why are you in good standing? Let me go ahead and take you. Because I know if you go a little bit further down the road, you might pop out of good standing. You might be on that broad path. So while you're on the straight and narrow, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to take you right now. You know? I'm just saying, y'all, we got a lot of hard times coming up. And God will be graceful and merciful to take you out. Um, if he know they can't, they can't. They ain't going to be able to handle this thing. They ain't going to be able to handle it. But I don't want y'all to give up the faith when you hear stuff like this, like this Pastor Greg Locke um, getting house getting shot. Don't give up the faith. Don't think God ain't with people. Don't think, you know, because same thing, that Sonya Massey, and I told y'all that Mark the Messenger was talking about, oh, she didn't have power. with. It's not about her having power with the word of God, that saying in Jesus' name. Number one, Jesus, when I cop heard Jesus, it definitely, he was rebuked because he was hot and he, he was triggered. Them, them demons did manifest in him. But I'm saying this, just because we believe in the Lord, just because we, I'm not saying that he don't supernaturally protect us. Don't see. And that's another thing. Y'all so bipolar that you either all the way on the left or the right and you can't really balance it out. I'm not saying you're not protected. I'm not saying that God don't love you. I'm not saying none of those things. But I'm saying just in case something does happen. Don't, don't, don't let your faith, don't let it fail you. Don't, don't stop. Don't be caught up in the, the great falling away. Excuse me, or the apostasy. Because things ain't working out how you thought it worked out. You never thought that you would be homeless or you never thought that you never, you don't know how you would have food to eat or you never thought that you wouldn't have a job or you never thought that a bum would go off in your neighborhood while you was home or you never thought that people wouldn't start shooting up the mall while you was there or you never thought that I'm just saying you never thought that your own Christian brothers and sisters would stab you in the throat in the back and the and the neck and throw you out <laughs> and the dirt okay I'm I'm telling you a lot of people's gonna leave the faith because of these things and this is why I say you got to be careful about who you're around right now. That's what I was telling you in that video. You have modern day Pharisees that is ready, baby. But you got your Peters too. You got your Judases as well. So hopefully you know the Bible and you get all of what I'm trying to say. You got your straight up betrayers, baby. They're going to straight up betray y'all. Don't want you. Don't want to deal with you. Don't know what a 30 pieces of silver. Then you got your Peters. Just your cool friends that, you know, they accidentally turn you in, right? They accidentally turn you in. And then, you know, you got, you know, the Pharisees, which is your your um, religious leaders. They're going to turn you in. And then you got your, um, what is Pontus, Pontus Pilots. You got your actual mayors. City councils, you know, Senate, you know, uh, Congress or whatever these people call themselves being a child. And they going to persecute you. They're going to pass some laws. To, so it's like you got to realize you really are about to run a bunch of wolves.
You are sheep and you're around a bunch of wolves. And you have to have much discernment. Listen, I don't know a lot about this man. All I know is what Isaiah said about him. But what I'm saying is get ready for more. And I'm sorry to say that. I'm so sorry to say that. So sorry. But God has not been ramming persecution, persecution, persecution. Like in me for a while now for no reason. And, you know, and persecution has always been here. It's But... It's about to be coming to a theater near you. You know, America hasn't really seen it like, like that, like that, like that. You know, black people did because we couldn't have churches and stuff like that. And they would lynch our people in front of the church. And so we kind of understand how it work. But that's for our former generations. Like my mom, my mom, my grandma, my, you know. That's not something that we my age about 50 experience so it's a new thing we just know the stories that we were told from our people but see satan is gonna let everybody join in this game it's not gonna be just black people is just the test but really satan hates everybody so now he's gonna let y'all join in on the game but don't give up the faith. It's just too many stories in the Bible where I saw it appeared like the disciples lost. It looked like the people lost because they died. They lost their lives preaching the gospel. You're going you're gonna to die anyways preaching the gospel or not, to be honest with you. And number two, if you're not doing the will of the Father, which is preaching the gospel, then you're not getting in. Read your, read your word very carefully. You got to be about your father's business. He didn't say just because you believe you getting in. <laughs> you got to read it line upon line, precept upon precept. Yes, it's building blocks to the gospel. That's why it needs to be taught. People think, oh, it's just the gospel. It's just easy. But it's not that easy because a lot of people really are not saved. It's a lot of people that say they're saved, but when you really ask them, they're not saved. They're not saved. They might want to be saved. They may be deceiving themselves, but they're not saved. Because as simple as the gospel is, y'all complicated. Y'all complex. So it's supposed to be so simple a child could do it, right? But y'all complicates it. Y'all complicates it. Tradition of man. You want to do what you want to do. You want to whatever doctrine you want to roll with. You want to you want to <laughs> celebrate everything that the the the, the pagans celebrate. You want to do everything that the pagans do. You want to you 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 want to be in Babylon. You love Babylon. You love everything about Babylon. Has nothing to do with God. Nothing. But get ready, y'all. Get ready for much persecution. You're going to be hearing stuff like this. The sad part is most of it is going to be your own kind. The sad part is it's going to be so-called Christians turning on Christians. That's the sad part of it all. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was a Christian, a so-called Christian, that did that to that man, to that um, pastor. I'm just saying. So, be prepared, guys. Don't let your faith. I just got to really drill that in. You know, I forgot what book this was I read, and maybe I shouldn't be bringing this up because it's not in the Bible, and so, you know, the Roman Catholic Church didn't agree with it. That's what I mean. So, anyways, I forgot which book it was, but it was a lady, and I think she has seven sons, and I just could not believe when I read this, guys. I, it, it hurt my heart so bad. But basically, all seven her sons was persecuted for believing in Jesus. 
and they killed them right in front of her. All of us sons, just like that, y'all. And you know what? Her sons went out bad, too. Because I remember they said, you know what? We was sinners. They were saying in their life before, you know, they had sin. And so they said, you know, we are guilty. And so even though the evil was being done to them, the wickedness was being done to them, they didn't, quote unquote, deserve it because they hadn't done nothing. But they said we deserve it because we sinners, because we have sinned, you know, um, from God. And this lady had to see all her babies die. I want y'all to, if you're not a woman, I ain't talking about you men that want to be women. But if you're not a woman and have kids, you you really can't understand that. But a woman having seven kids and you have to bear seeing all of your children die at the same time in the same day. That's somebody that can turn away their faith. But she didn't. But they didn't. But they didn't. Y'all, we living in the day and the age. <sighs> you didn't watch the movies. You didn't watch even the false prophet prophecy movies where they talk about what's going to happen in the tribulation of how the, the Satan is going to have a field day killing um, Christians. Just have a good old funky time. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says that God Gave him permission to prevail. That means to take over. That means to murder. That means to kill. The Bible says that the Satan, the dragon, he was given the power and the authority to, to prevail over the saints. That means he, he murked them. He killed them. It's a point with 144. I mean, um, is it 144,000 are the two witnesses? It's a point where they're going to be murdered. It's the point where God allows these things to happen. It doesn't mean God does not love you. Now, I do, again, I don't know this man from a can of paint. Let's say he's the worst. Let's say he's the worst person in the world. And, you know, God says his judgment, his judgment is set. He deserves it. And let's say he was being, and I'm not saying this, but let's say maybe he was being judged. He still was protected because God still loved him and God still protected him. And hopefully y'all Christians is praying for him according to Isaiah. Y'all not even praying for the man. Y'all not even praying for the man. And most of y'all out here act like y'all pray for every little thing. It's going to be an explosion over here. It's going to be something's going to go bump in the night in Missouri tomorrow. Something. But y'all ain't even praying for a real truth. That's how come I be thinking y'all be playing games, like, for real. That's how come I be like, yo, there's some false prophets up off over here. But anyways, that's for God to deal with. That's for God to deal with y'all with, baby. Baby. But I just <clears throat> don't give up the faith. I don't care what happened. And the guillotines... We know Obama been ordering them things way back in, what, 2012, 2011, 2012. So, I think I heard, um, I forgot where I heard, but they said them things is set up and ready to go with the coffins. So, I'm just saying, if, if, if listen, don't fall away from the faith, man. Don't fall away from the faith. Don't fall away from the faith. It's going to seem unfair. A lot of it going to seem unfair. A lot of it, it's going to seem like, dang, how come, I did, how come all my enemies living and everybody I love is dropping? Don't just, don't fall away from the faith, all right? I'm just trying to, I'm just saying, don't fall away. And hopefully, as for um, Pastor Greg Locke, hopefully he is in touch with the Lord. 
and he is getting some answers of what in the world is going on but I know he definitely thanking the Lord for preserving himself and his children and, and wife and things life but um guys yes we we have got to hold on that's all just hold on hold on okay because it's about to get turned up and we as it get turned up as the fire get turned up y'all are about, about, about to see some new people but anyways with that i'm gonna get out of here i just wanted to um talk about that a little bit because um a lot, more is coming more is coming more is coming but you don't but you don't move where you are where you're at you still stand your ground with what you stand your ground on and you stand your ground on the gospel you stand your ground on the gospel i don't care what demon tell you no the gospel is wrong it's spiritual warfare don't trust in it the devil is gonna get you if you spread the gospel like what kind of weak back sensitive saint is you that you can't ask your friends to come to church with you. Uh, you can't share the love of Jesus Christ with a, um, a friend at work or an associate at, at school. You weak back. And God called you coward. I call you weak back. But God calls you a coward. And you're going to hell for being a coward. So don't spread that gospel if you want to. Listening to these false prophets. All right? Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Talk to y'all later. Would your Christian walk with Jesus Christ be more compelling, more uplifting and encouraging if you could just hear him speak? Do you need direction and instruction on how to improve your relationship, job, health, or finances? Are you frustrated having one-way prayer conversations with God never ever hearing him talk back? Do you need to know how to move in these end times with wars, rumors of war, cashless society, and the mark of the beast soon to come on stage? In this very simple to read no fluff guide, you will find out why you cannot yet hear God's voice. Yes, there are things that will block you from hearing him speak, even though in reality he is talking to you. Discover these six things that are blocking your communication with the king. In addition to that, discover 10 ways that he speaks that have been hidden from you in plain sight. Practice these 10 keys to get your spiritual ears open and finally hear the voice of God. Watch your life improve once you began hearing Him speak, as you have wisdom at your fingertips 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You can ask Him questions on your life, and yes, you can expect answers once I unveil these 10 powerful yet simple practical keys to open the door to the King's voice in this book on Amazon called Intimacy with the King. Pick up your copy today with the link below or go to Amazon to grab your copies for you and your saved loved ones.